Hello and welcome to this module 19 on manufacturing systems technology. A quick recap of what we did in the last few modules. We talked about the CAD CAM data exchange process, discussed about the various uh, exchange neutral formats like IGS or PDS or DXF drawing exchange format so on and so forth. These are the neutral formats which are made for uh, making the process of data uh, exchange easier between uh, one processor to the other processor or different machines. We also talked about direct and indirect strategies, how many processors are needed. We had a summary of the various manufacturing processes like turning, drilling, milling, grinding, uh, different operations uh, which uh, necessitate, we are, which, which are the knowledge of which is necessitated while you are trying to do CAPP or computer aided process planning. Uh, we talked about some definitions and then finally started uh, the different steps of the CAP process. And uh, just uh, again a quick recap of what were the various steps. We talked about uh, this step 1 to 4 here. Uh, in this particular slide, we discussed about the analysis of part requirements, what really it means in terms of CAPP. We also talked about the selection of raw workpiece material. We uh, further uh, discussed in detail about determining uh, number one the operations which are involved in making the part, number two the sequences of the various operations, whether there is a drilling followed by milling or vice versa depending on the part geometry, you know. So, those intelligent decisions have to be taken at this particular uh, step. We also discussed about selection of machine tools and some of the criteria which are used therein, which involves the of the selection based on process capability analysis of a machine. Okay. So, in that context we had just begun some analysis regarding you know how uh, we really uh, do uh, the, the selection uh, based on uh, the work piece related attributes okay, uh, such as uh, let us say the kind of features which are desired in the final drawing, the dimensions of the work piece, its dimensional tolerances, the raw materials so on so forth. We also uh, you know uh, evaluated some of the machine tool related attributes such as process capability, size, mode of operation, example uh, whether the machine is manual, semi-automatic, automatic, numerical controlled, etc. The tooling capabilities for example, size and type of tool magazine, the automatic tool changing capabilities so on and so forth. And the final important thing that we arrived at was the production volume related information such as production quantity and order frequency. So, in this context we actually did a realistic problem earlier where we talk about the a sort of a mathematical model which will uh, let you or enable you to select between different machines based on matching the process capability with the design requirements, the tolerance of the particular system. And so, uh, if you may recall we talked about this transformation process right about here where there would be some input in a machine, there is an output from the machine and there are certain rejects. We further try to fit the uh, normal distribution contained by the particular machine output as a part of its process capability with respect to the tolerances which are there in the design. And uh, we uh, computed from the distribution uh, the, uh, the mean of the, the process mean and the process standard defu uh, definition. Obviously, these are mostly given by the manufacturers at the time of supplying the uh, technical specifications related to the machinery that they are selling. And uh, from there and from the design requirements that we have, we tried to calculate the Z variate. I think we had done a lot of detailed analysis about what is the Z variate and how normal distribution is obtained. And from the Z variate on the upper and the lower side, you know, we tried to further uh, see what can be the material balance equation and calculated this as scrap fraction here. Okay. And the scrap fraction is again a fraction of the input. So, how much scrap is generated with respect to how much input for the particular case here we are talking about the uh, jth process and the kth system of tolerance right system of tolerance. So, that is how we kind of modeled uh, this and then we further uh, try to create a material balance uh, equation at the transformation stage where this is the input side. Okay and there is an output which is concerned with the process and then there is a scrap output which is there. So, the output and scrap combined together should actually result in the input number of units which are going into the process. So, we will now slightly uh, change gears at this point of time and define a strategy by uh, also formulating certain coefficients and these coefficients are quite standard and they can be used again and again. So, computationally they become much simpler if you use these coefficients in all the 
processes. Uh, remember, we are just handling here one system of tolerance for a particular specific, you know, uh, machine or a specific process. There may be n number of uh, such tolerances which may need to be addressed by, let's say, m number of machines in uh, or m number of process capabilities related to different processes. So, obviously, uh, the volume of uh, such calculations become quite expansive when we talk about the whole organization or the whole design that we want to manufacture uh, for for the particular organization okay so therefore handling all these with certain coefficients and easy representation is the first logical step towards uh, <coughs> creating a generic representation of the whole whole situation so we define the following we call it technological coefficients and this can be defined per unit output to represent the input requirements of a process. You see, uh, what we are <coughs> mostly given in all situations is what should be the process output, what is the demand. But uh, we somehow have to formulate by fitting a capability of a certain process on to that particular design, uh, that how much input would be needed to really do that output. If the scrap level is high, then obviously input requirement per unit the output would be much larger and that will be a direct cost to the company. So, uh, we are therefore, designing the system in a manner that everything is reflected in terms of the, uh, the output level, which is actually a constant defined by the market or the particular situation in which you know you are producing the design, manufacturing the design through a process and you are unable to select the process now, uh, you are at that kind of a stage uh, in, the, in the production of the, in the part. So, the first coefficient that we define here, we represent as k i j k and we call it the input technological coefficient and this is further represented by y i j k by y o j k. That means, how much input per unit output are we talking about. We similarly do one for scrap, we call it k s j k and represent this as y s j k per unit the output y o j k and uh, you must understand that there is an interrelationship between this equation and this equation you know and that is uh, written through that Obviously, the k s j k value can be represented as the y s j k divided by the input minus the scrap, which is actually the output. So, if I were to represent everything in terms of ratios, I would like to have a situation here where uh, dividing by let us say the output on both sides, we have y s j k by y i j k okay. and we have 1 minus y s j k by y i j k. So, that is how you represent the scrap coefficient k s j k. Obviously, from the equation done earlier right about here, we call this equation a, we find out that the scrap coefficient is represented in terms of number of scrap per unit the number of input. Okay. So, I can easily simplify this as the scrap coefficient for the jth process of the k s tolerance alternative tolerance sequence that we are choosing minus 1 minus of 
the scrap coefficient of the jth process of the kth tolerance system that we are choosing. And obviously, I think we had earlier mentioned it very well that how you can represent these processes by the cumulative distribution functions uh, corresponding to the lower tolerance and the upper tolerance okay, uh, represented in this manner. And so, I would like to actually write this down in terms of the cumulative distribution function uh, proposed in the equation a here and I write this as the cumulative distribution function of the lower variate plus 1 minus of the cumulative distribution of the upper variate divided by the cumulative distribution of again the upper variate of this particular situation jth process and kth alternative tolerance minus of the cumulative distribution of the lower variate of the system j k. So, that is how you can define this technological coefficient of scrap or technologically uh, you know technological scrap coefficient whatever you may call it. And obviously, the relationship that happens from this material balance equation if I were to just divide the equation here by the output everywhere. So, let us say I divide this by y o j k this becomes 1 and this becomes y s j k by y o j k. Okay. So, obviously, this can then be more appropriately represented in terms of the k's as the k i j k is actually equal to 1 plus k s j k. Okay. So, these are some of the representations of importance one of them is this one of them obviously, is how you represent the scrap coefficient and we will take all these numbers from here in terms of the cumulative distribution functions of the lower and upper variates and the technological coefficients which are given in this particular uh, domain here to solve a cost equation which will really lead us to decision making about the process selection. Okay. If there are many more than one processes which are there which we need to select how we do the selection would be on the basis of this uh, coefficients and ultimately the cost of the material that is going into the process. So, let us look at that. So, now let us again sort of summarize our material balance equation. So, obviously, the input is represented in terms of the technological coefficient formulated here k i j k times of the output and so is the scrap formulated by the technologically you know technological scrap coefficient or scrap, scrap fraction times of technological coefficient for scrap times of output level of the process. So, that is regarding the material balance equation and we now start calculating cost. We lay down the cost equation here. So, we will have to make some assumptions. Let us say in our situation if we assume that x i j k x o j k and x s j k are the unit costs obviously, of input output and scrap respectively. And further there is a processing cost per unit. And we intentionally define it as a function of the input because uh, obviously, uh, if this input side is of the material is more 
then uh, the processing cost would be lower and vice versa. So, processing cost definitely depends on what is the input uh, side of the component. You could do batch sizing, you could do uh, many things in terms of setup times, etcetera, to have a reduced cost, processing cost. So, we just call it a function of the input, obviously. And then we do the cost equation here. So, the input given into the system costs x i j k, number of inputs here is y i j k. So, therefore, this is the total cost from the input plus the processing cost of the input, which is again number of units times the per unit processing cost as defined from this particular step is the total cost that you are adding to the input for making uh, into the output. And uh, <coughs> this can be represented in terms of obviously, the output unit cost times of the output level. This is the cost at which the uh, is a cost to the to the customer, which the production system or the manufacturing system is taking from the customer. And that plus the scrap cost times of the number of units of the scrap. So, this is actually <coughs> the cost balance equation. One has to be able to at least balance this cost to uh, create a manufacturing system, which is almost cost free. Obviously, there is a profit angle and other things, which can be coupled up later. So, that there is an expansion of the manufacturing system, but just from a cost balance point of view, this is at least the minimum condition that any process should meet. Okay. So, then therefore, the output cost here can be very easily determined from this equation as the k i. Obviously, uh, you can define or you can you can sort of divide wherever there is a you know representation of y i j k uh, as given in 1 or y s j k again as given in 2 in terms of output. And so, I can say that this can be represented as let us just write the full form of it for uh, you guys to see this uh, more appropriately. This goes as y i j k divided by y o j k times of x i j k minus of y s j k by y output j k times of excess j k plus y i j k by y o j k times of function of y i j k, okay, the processing cost. And so, it can be more appropriately represented as the input technological coefficient times the input cost unit cost minus the scrap technological coefficient times the scrap unit cost plus the input technological coefficient times the processing cost, which comes into picture. And that is how you can find out the output cost per unit of the particular manufacturing process, the jth process that is in question. So, I think in the, we are kind of done about this cost uh, balance equation. So, what we did is we started with a normal variate uh, and we calculated from the normal variate the cumulative distribution function. And uh, from there we could record what is the scrap fraction, we developed technological coefficients and tried to address the material balance equation and then finally, the cost equation where an output cost was reported. Now, I am going to now uh, probably in the next lecture take up a practical problem from my industry standpoint and see that when such a decision criteria is applied, uh, what would be the fundamentals associated with taking such a decision. So, we will do that in the next module. Thank you.